Okay, okay. This is purely. This is a schism. Last time I'm coming here. <clears throat> but everything I do is sort of semi. It's linked into symbolism of sorts, but I don't know what for. It isn't a game. It's. It's if, if anything, it's a kairos. It's a. There is a time. Symbolically, certain things happen at certain times, or certain. Uh, almost random, seemingly random material actions, i.e. a breakdown or something like that. Anyway, I'm never off duty. Always got the paperwork working through. Now, I've sent a message to somebody today. Now, of course, this. Uh, the, the, the problem in Britain, and this has really got to be the end. Tomorrow it has to start. I have to go and start to engage with some gatekeepers to some extent finding some minor funding because because even the last uh, nine months nine months I've been stranded in this area not planned many times I go into phases where and I'm only sitting here actually because my stuff's charging up in there Ten more minutes to go, and then I'll go. Right. Yeah, many times I've been in the mode, as in the last few days, of I simply would not wish my life, always with one small codicil, in respect of uh, a young person, 24 years old, who's been utterly poisoned by our society, and the complete psychodrama and inability ever to say what you mean, mean what you say and keep to written legal agreements but then forget all that, put all that aside because I've realised something that pondering as I was in the car park earlier doing a big final prepare the several computers because I want to lend one to somebody don't know if that's going to help but very old computers I kind of realised something. I'll come back to it in a minute. Right, why have I turned this on? Oh yeah, liberate their electricity. And that's actually, I'm going to get into that in a moment. But uh, nine months, the majority of the time, I've been in a mode of every single thing is useful and leads me to be full. Last few days, particularly, no, no, again, I should say again, there was three or four tough, uh, minor tough weeks of just every time you go to the towns, the noise, the, and it's actually about that total lack of genuine life force that one encounters in towns. It's impossible to encounter it from anybody. Everybody's lost to the whole bourgeois, Madame Bovary, even the ones that pretend they're not, or that state they're not, or that dress actively not to be. Nope, they're all lost to that. I finish with Britain. Uh, yeah, I am particularly interested, but I've been for five years and I've really got to do something about it. Uh, I've started to do things about it, but I can't publish stuff about the truth of the environment uh, regionally in my name. I will get hurt. Yeah, I wrote something to somebody an hour ago who I met and had the most extraordinary meeting with. Most of you, no, never before. Simply never before. I hope she can read. Anyway, yeah, this whole thing. I mean, I have realised for a decade these cheesy, trite, pleasing phrases like virtue signalling. They do no good. But that's just, that's virtue signalling. We've been saying that stuff for 30 or 40 years. I mean, the, the, nobody does real proper alliance. This one particular woman, she gets it most unusually, and during our quite long conversation, she did not in any way balk. Uh, she knows and exactly. It's in land of the blind. Be careful. Those who had the moral uh, higher ground, even though they're smashed to pieces, as they gradually get a little bit of power back, as in that fantastic film, they become totalitarian, dodgy, 
Stalinist, Maoist, dangerous people too. And that's actually what has happened, even though, even though you see, the joke of that is that the Green Lobby, those actually in the environment, in the regions where we have the environment, they've never done anything there. They think that just because they have a thousand people on a Facebook, that that's doing something. It's doing nothing. They've never done anything. And in fact, the same amount of people were at that gathering uh, for Green People uh, Sunday before last than were seven or eight years ago. They've actually done nothing. They cannot carry. They cannot somehow find a way of getting <coughs> new people in. Anyway, I'm, I've been thinking and writing about that for a long time, but it's time I really do start publishing properly about it. Uh, Issy Green said to my face, him and me for half an hour recorded that. Yeah. If that's the reality, at least help the next generation by telling them the uncomfortable truth. And that doesn't give me any pleasure at all. Proper, creative, in the zone writing gives me pleasure. Right to the point. Why did I turn this on? Yeah. I've got five more minutes to go and I'm wasting battery. Yeah, I realised this morning. And at the one area... Now, I've actually done a lot of famous work in the law of families, etc, etc. And um, famous. I'm a reformer. Really almost called me slightly celebrated, but forget it. Um, written deals, but anyway, we'll get back into the point. So there's two points. I realised, particularly assisting somebody whose family was in a huge mess, intelligent person, full-time for 10 days. That's good hours. Uh, the harm done is so that she's only repeating patterns done to her parents, and that's crystal, crystal clear. When people are in these not rational, not calm, not centred states, and I think in her family for over a hundred years, it's crystal clear. Everything that's in influenza is in her family, and it did so much harm. They can't listen to guidelines such as uh, peace plans within families and things like that. They can't do it. That's naive of me to think that. I'm doing that with this woman. But here's the other thing. So you have the, the, the mess, the dysfunction, the psychodrama, the uh, emotional abuse, etc. within, and I don't usually use the word abuse, it's yet another word that's been entirely overused. There's no point using these words if people can't do real things about them. Now I've been trying to help her, it's far too late. But uh, I'm going to try and help sort things out with uh, her father. There's some practical matters that have to be dealt with and she's not up to it. Anyway, but then I realised something occurred to me the last, as the last ten years really, longer, but ten years particularly, I've often spoken with people in the area, not socially, I've made a point if I meet people, if there was somebody sitting on this bench, I'd try and talk to them about the reality of families and behaviours and children in the area. And I realised something. Now, just going back to that thing of being involved in family reform. The thing that, one of the things, several things that made me uncomfortable, or rather I realised it's impossible. It's an Occam's razor. Fifteen years ago, much more in the news and continually in the forums was definite paedophilia. But then I knew people, I knew them well who, men, <coughs> no, and women, no, no, both, who are obsessed with there being injustice throughout the court system, and yet, when it came to that word, they did not apply the same standards of scepticism towards so-called evidence, um, because almost all of these things, it's he said, she said, or rumours and whatever. And I just realised that, that there's a huge problem in that world, and it, well, it's certainly not my world. It's been part of the reform that I was very, very uh, almost symbolic of for uh, almost a decade. But there's no point saying anything about it. And of course, is the point? Yes, definitely, there is actual physical harm 
to many kids, but I realize that this whole region, and it just comes down to, you see, the media, education, etc., can speak about emotional intelligence and learning strategies and empathies and all that kind of thing. And they've been talking about it for 20 years. But I realize, I mean, I'm actually only 50 miles from where the Fred West family is probably only 40 miles uh, were operating. Yeah, without a doubt that over the last 100 years there have been dotted around some really, really quite evil people, but not probably not more than average, or maybe a bit more than average. There's just something about this whole region. But here's the real thing. You see, almost everybody else, no it is, everybody else, they cannot speak about these things. And I'm not talking about paedophilia now. They cannot speak about ordinary things that we all understand that are going wrong in families. They can't even speak about them. Because, that, I mean, that's disastrous because we need to speak about them to at least be able to emotionally support, morally support one another in the community, maybe sometimes. I mean, I'm actually quite a good friend of the main lady reverend in the area, but there is no lexicon. They do not have, they're not in the habit of speaking about these things in a healthy, productive, mature way such that middle-aged people could maybe be part of beginning to fix things, or at the very least, as I've just spent the last three days, trying to figure a good counselling that somebody can go to. They can't do it. There is no tradition. And that, I've realised, and it's part, part, out of this, it's not fear, it's the wrong word, but just this sort of terrible dark cloud that they know there's one or two people around who are the real baddies. And it's almost like they're all living under this cloud. I've totally wasted my last 10 years trying to have any, because they, I mean, I've actually been part of creating solutions for that stuff, or beginning to, the first stage, the first guideline. One of them was in my name. But no, oh, that whole world of rationally, sensibly, just trying to slightly, professionally help in situations to every ordinary person I've ever met. And it gets worse and worse because you have all the uh, semi-retiree 55 year olds, none of whom are actual Guardian readers or anything like that. Um, that whole lexicon, that whole mindset, that with a little bit of careful, wise, elder input, you could improve things a bit, or protect people a bit better. No, that conversation is not possible. And I've been having that conversation a lot. And not always. I'm more interested the last decade in green stuff. But no, it's really interesting. It's made me realise, because I've actually tried to engage three or four people regarding the person I've been trying to help out. Um, and that's purely a mutually beneficial alliance because she needs some building work and will get ripped off unless she has somebody she can trust. And it's not her house. She can't even go to the house because the man living in the house for many years did, without a doubt, seriously, weirdly, high-functioning, though, uh, emotionally abuse her. There is no question about it. Anyway, end of. Time to go.